So we're gonna talk about the feed kitchens today. Um, feed is food enterprise economic and economic development. Um, we cover a little bit of everything on that. Um, quick history, the feed kitchens was uh, project was initiated to provide economic, by the way, this is, um, the first part I'm going to read to you is something that was written by uh, a lady by the name of Ellen Bernard who helped to get this project going. Um, so I'm actually going to read it because I'd like to use her words and then I'll ramble myself for a little bit. Uh, so, uh, Feed Kitchens Project was initiated to provide economic and job training opportunities to those seeking to start, grow, or work in a food-related business. Uh, the needs for such space as feed was first identified in Madison around 1997, uh, and in 2008, Madison Northside Planning Council, Community Development Organization, uh, chose that as their next major project. They did five years of funding, planning, and culminated in the building that we have here. Uh, we're located at the corner of Aberg and Sherman, so we're on major bus line, we're uh, take 30 right out there. They spent a good amount of that five years trying to find the right space. There's a lot of spaces around Madison they could have used, but this just seemed like it was a great starting point. We're in the center of the mall there, right in the center of the parking lot, and we have a lot of potential for growth. The project cost $1.57 million. Uh, it was raised through donations, grants, and a $400,000 loan. Uh, we were lucky enough that uh, we got a kickoff from the city in a grant of $500,000 for economic development. Um, the main goal of what we do, and I guess we'll start going through, but the main goal is, is to build businesses and provide, provide a startup for small business, small food businesses in, Dane, in Madison and Dane County. Um, we're still fundraising, we're still working on it. We have more things to do, more equipment to add, more projects that we want to work on but we, at this point, have a usable facility. So that was a brief history. <laughs> uh, so we are a multi-user uh, facility. We have five kitchen spaces that users can work in. And they uh, can work at the same time, they can work together. It's available 24-7. We use uh, key card access and we have uh, electronic locks and cameras on the outside. So. I'm there 40 hours a week, but the great thing is I can be sitting in my pajamas at home, somebody calls up and says, hey, I forgot my card. Great, look at the camera, pull out the iPad. Okay, you're in the building now. Um, and we can program everything. I've got people programmed out through 2015 for when they want to use and have it all set up so that they're able to get into the building when they need to. Uh, it is owned by the Northside Planning Council. Uh, it's an interesting thing for them because they are a community organization. They, they help do a lot of the funding and a lot of the good works on the north side. They've never owned a business before, so it's a learning experience for everybody involved. Uh, as far as the management, I'm the kitchen manager. I'm the on-site. People say, oh, well, you know, where are all the employees? That's me. Uh, I have a name tag that I've got about 20 different little inserts for, everything from manager to janitor to official food taster to crazy old coot. Uh, <laughs> We have uh, the NPC, uh, their executive director is Karen Bassler. She uh, helped with a lot of the project and she and their board provide me with a lot of support, provide the users of the place for a lot of support. We also have an advisory team made up of community members that are business owners, restaurateurs, uh, bankers, things like that, that are there to help guide me in what I'm doing and also to really help the users because that's what it all comes down to in the end. Uh, I also. I have some slides throughout of different things, and I apologize if at the end of this you're hungry. It just happens. Uh, I, I get to sit in an office all day smelling all these baked goods. It's great. <laughs> so it's just a, a short list of a bunch of the funders that we've had, and we have literally hundreds of just community members that saw the need of this project and donated anything from twenty to two thousand dollars. People who said, "Hey, I have this piece of equipment. Would that help you out?" So it's been a really great community effort. So different types of users. Uh, we have food, we have two different types that then break down into subcategories. We have commercial or casual users. Casual user is anybody who's going to be using the facility and not selling a product. Uh, the Wilmar Neighborhood uh, Association got together and did their pie bake there this year. They made 900 pies in 11 hours. Uh, and we'll be back again in November to do it. That's their chief fundraiser every year. We have uh, some of the master gardeners that want to come in at the end of their growing season and every year they kind of share out things. Well, instead of trying to make stuff in 10 different kitchens, they can come into our one kitchen, rent space, make up all their canned tomatoes, their pickles, all that kind of stuff and share it out. Uh, and then we have the commercial users. So the commercial users are 
uh, food, food entrepreneurs, people who want to start a new business or have a business already that they need to expand. The failure rate for restaurants and, and food businesses, is, new startups, is ridiculously high. And a lot of it is because just to get the basic equipment for a bakery, you're looking at between fifty dollars and $125,000. And that's just to have an oven-proof box and dishwasher. You're not talking about the rent on, on the facility, any of the other things. So we took that on ourselves. We have all the facilities. And then we just rent to the users so that they don't have the risk involved. They can go out, they can experiment, and they might find out after three or four months, oh my god, this was a terrible idea. And they don't have the huge output of money. They just have what they've spent on their time. Um, we also have Farm to Table Healthy Snack Program. The, the REAP organization here in Madison is great. And they have a farm to school program where every Tuesday they come out, they have fresh, local, organically produced or non-organically uh, produced vegetables that they process. They slice up organic carrots. They uh, julienne kohlrabi and package them up. And then the Madison Area School District comes out picks them up and distributes them out as their healthy snack program during the week. So they're able to use our equipment in our kitchen and, and just knock that out really fast and be able to work there. Uh, we have a couple of nonprofit programs that are working there right now. The River Food Pantry and Madison Area Urban Ministry teamed up and put a pro program together where they do nine weeks of training with either uh, unemployed, uh, sorry, brain just froze, uh, unemployed uh, users of the food pantry or recently released inmates and they're giving them uh, bakery and kitchen math, life skills, like how to write a resume, how to take care of yourself, how to get your own apartment, things like that. And then they bring them in and do basic kitchen and baking training. So they're baking different breads, they're doing sweet rolls, morning buns. And at the end of that nine week program, they test, uh, they, they do a baking test and a written test and if they pass, they get a certificate from the Wisconsin Baker Society. They also get their serve safe qualification so that they can go out to a restaurant, go out to a bakery, and have real life job skills that can get them a job and help them be independent. Uh, we're also working with MATC for some non-credit classes they're going to do there, do some uh, basic community work teaching, you know, this is how you sharpen a knife, this is how you fillet a fish, this is how you bake Christmas cookies. Uh, we also have different individuals in the community that are doing some demonstrations. Uh, we've talked about doing like little chef demos, things along that lines. Uh, I guess I kind of did backwards. I covered the occasional cashew first. Uh, we also have meeting space. We have a, uh, a meeting room that our users can use throughout the day for teaching class or whatnot. But they, then we also have different members of the community that rent it out. So it gives us a little bit more expanded scope. We're a 5,400 square foot building. Uh, as I said, it's in Northgate Shopping, 24-7. Uh, we have five different areas. So we have our bakery. So the bakery has a couple of nice big maple tables. We have a 60-quart mixer. And then in the background, we have a roll-in oven where they can do two rolling racks with 20 full-size sheet pans each. Picks them up, spins them around, bakes with, with convection heat. You don't have any hot spots. It's great. I watched them make 1,200 cookies in about 12 minutes one day. It was awesome. <laughs> they let me try them. Uh, we have our vegetable processing kitchen. This kitchen is a no meat kitchen. It's for uh, raw fruits and veggies. That's where they do the school snack program. We have some people that are doing some uh, organic sprouting and dehydrated and dried foods. So they're, they're able to have an area that has no meat production in it whatsoever. And they're able to keep that a little more sanitary, a little safer for everything they're doing. We have our restaurant like deli kitchen. Uh, as we approach spring and summer, we have a number of food carts that are going to be using us as a base, number of caterers. Again, it's a great opportunity for a food cart where a lot of them are trying to base themselves out of somebody else's restaurant, out of a church basement kitchen, things like that. And the health department is really cracking down a lot on it. You have to be in a licensed facility. You have to be licensed in that facility. That's one of the issues that we help different users with. We go through the whole process with them of how do you apply to the health department? How do you get all your paperwork in? What do you need to get into the state? But this gives them a stable place so that all of a sudden the restaurant they're renting from doesn't say, you know what, we have a breakfast group that's coming in and I know we told you, we could you that you could use the kitchen, but we need to do this breakfast for 25 people so you just can't do your food cart today. It gives them great stability and gives them that opportunity. We have our training kitchen which is set up for about 12 people for teaching the baking classes, things like that. It's a, a more enclosed space and gives them a little bit 
set aside so that they can not have to speak over ovens and whatnot. And then our meat processing kitchen, which right now is the second phase of development. It's usable now for, for people. We actually had uh, Megan Heil, the lady behind Madison Chocolates, which if you haven't seen anything on Madison Chocolates, look them up. She does a chocolate CSA. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> she was in there working today. Uh, but eventually this kitchen is another set aside. It has a, sep oops, sorry, has a separate uh, uh, ventilation, separate heating, and it's closed off. Both doors are sealed doors so that if someone's making egg rolls, breakfast burritos, things like that, that are going to have meat in them, they're away from the other process, which helps a lot as well. Oops, sorry. Uh, we have uh, dry, cold, and frozen storage. People can use the coolers and freezers as they're working, but then we also have space that they can rent for long-term storage, so that they don't have to try to take stuff off-site, bring it back on. They have it there. It cuts down on any, any handling issues and makes it a little bit more feasible for them. Uh, and then, of course, the conference room and the shared office space. Now, one of the cool things, too, this conference room, everything in that room was either donated or was bought at swap. I think all told for conference table, chairs, bookshelf, there's a, a curio cabinet behind that you can't see. We spent about $5. Uh, <laughs> so it's been, people came in, looked at the place like, do you need a conference table? Yeah. I have when you want it. Sure. You bring your truck. We'll load it up. Great. Um, same thing in the small office here. A lot of donations, a lot of things that we were able to get, you know, just to keep things going well. Uh, as I said, too, we've got, we've got the cameras so that we can kind of track when people are in and out. People have that security. If you're there working at 2 o'clock in the morning, all the doors are auto-locked. The only person that can get in there is you or somebody else who is verified for that time that they're, when they swipe their card, they're good to go. Otherwise, they're, you're set. Uh, and then the on-site manager, me. Um, and I live all of three minutes away, so there's times where I get to run over there real quick. Uh, we have some equipment that we trade around that goes in the different kitchen areas that people can use. Um, the biggest thing that we do, though, is small, small business support. We were part of the buy right group down here, which is a, a group buying group. The users can buy products through us at cost from Reinhardt, Edward Don, some of the major providers, which if you're starting a new business is really, really tough to get accounts with those people. You can't, uh, you know, you go to, to Reinhardt and you say, hey, I'm starting this cake business. I want to be able to order stuff from you. And they're like, great, fill out this application and in a month we might let you get there on a cash basis. Because we have the backing, we've got all the users, and because we have the Northside Planning Council behind us, they gave us a membership. They said, here, you can let your users buy from that. We carry the risk on it, but it really helps out the small businesses. Uh, for the, we work with WIBIC, with the Small Business Development Center, uh, with Madison College to help people write business plans. We're working with an insurance agent to put together an insurance co-op to help everybody because, again, as a small business, you need to have a million dollars in liability insurance. So all these different things that we can do to help these businesses, and we track how many jobs we create, how many new businesses are started, things along that line, so we can report back to the city and so that we can keep going. We could keep the, the kitchens full all the time, and every three months have all new users in there because the business has failed and we're not making our goals. We're not succeeding at all. We're not a money-making venture. We are a nonprofit. Everything that we do goes back into the kitchens and then once we have our loans paid off, everything will go back into the community through other programs through the, the NPC. Our whole goal is to get these businesses going, bring more local food into Madison, which is kind of funny because there's a ton of local food here, but just giving more opportunity to, to the food carts, to a lot of these different things that a lot of the people who are doing it have really great concepts that you don't see a lot just because it is so difficult to start a small business. Chocolate chip scones, they're awesome. Uh, so yeah, I, I, part of my job, a lot of it, is to sit down with people, go through their checklist, help them out. I have people calling me at 10 o'clock at night or people just wandering in with, I, what do I do with this? Let's sit down and work. And if I don't know it, we have a great support network to help them with it. Uh, everything that we do is set through Google Calendar. So I have all the different kitchen spaces set up. Everybody can, if you're a user in the kitchen, I invite you to that calendar. They can also check our website and see what's available when. Anything that's blocked out is gone, and that way they can let me know. I schedule them in, and that's their time. They never have to worry about getting bumped. Um, for 
just about on time here, real quick. Uh, for commercial users, we do a $100 application and $100 orientation fee. Uh, do an orientation that is set specifically to them and then go through all their paperwork. For casual users, a $50 fee because they're using it once or twice and doing a lot less. Um, our rental rates, we do a de-escalating scale, so four to 15 hours a week is $25 an hour, 16 to 30, 20, and 31 or more, 15. Uh, again, we're not there to, to make a ton of money, we're there to help these businesses. Um, and this stuff is, part of this slide is what I showed to new users, so there's the finished scones. So thank you very much. I hope you all have a great weekend.